Hi, I'm Michael Wilde. This is a blue cat. And today I'm gonna to be going through the first part of creating this asset, which was using Substance Painter to create the maps for this gold collar that you can see up close here. So the first part of this asset was actually sculpting it from a sphere and ZBrush and then doing a quick retopo. But that was at the end of the last year that I started making this and I didn't record it. So this series is gonna focus on the bits after the model is complete texturing, some additional sculpting, some look dev, and maybe even some groom and basic comp work at the end. So starting off, I've taken my model into substance and already baked my maps. So this isn't gonna be a step-by-step -step guide, more me just talking over what I'm doing and explaining my general process. So if you have any questions or things that I miss out, then just leave them as a comment and I'll make sure to get you answers. So what am I doing here? So I'm starting with substances inbuilt material of gold. And I'm also trying out some of their smart materials to see what that gives me, see if that works well with the curvature and stuff like that, but I'm not really liking it. So I'm just gonna build everything from scratch from this just gold material. So as you can see, I'm just playing with color. I'm trying out some different light rigs as well, just to make sure because gold is so dependent on reflections because it's so metallic and shiny, then light rig that works well is gonna be super important to show off how the material is looking and it's going to change under different lighting conditions. So now I've got that, I'm just going through the procedurals in Substance and I'm adding a new layer to add some roughness detail. So I've turned off all the other channels and it's just going to affect my roughness. And I'm just trying out some of the procedurals that Substance comes with to see what works. Like I said, gold is so dependent on reflections, its color is really quite consistent, but things like roughness and bump are gonna be the main things that make this. So off screen, I've actually got some reference that I'm playing with, and I'm just trying to match that, get a little bit of breakup in the reflections in that specularity there. Playing with the scale as well to make sure that it looks the size that it should. So it's always important to have reference up at the same time. I don't think I ever drag it onto this screen, but I am always looking at it as I go. So now I'm just trying some masks as well to see if that can give me rougher bits only in certain places, for example, around the ambient occlusion. So here I'm just inverting that mask to try and get it rougher. I want it in kind of the crevices where dirt would build up. So now I'm just going through that mask generator that, that smart mask has and just making sure that it sits in kind of the nooks and the crannies of the object. So a lot of this video is just gonna be me playing with sliders. Substance is great because you're basically look deving on the fly. So you can see how your material is gonna look at render time because you're not just viewing a flat color like you would sometimes in Mari. So yeah, a lot of this video, especially later on, I'm gonna speed up things significantly so you don't just see me dialing up and down sliders, but that is often what I am doing in Substance just to get something that really works. And it's a lot of fine tuning when I find something that is kind of working, maybe just a few different numbers here, different numbers there, just to get something that really, really pops. And then, so what I was doing there is I was viewing the mask and now I've popped back to the material as a whole just to see how that's reacting. I've now added some color to that fill so that it's not just adjusting the roughness, it's also making the base color a little bit darker as if it was dirt building up. So what I'm looking for here is a kind of soft fall off. I don't want it to be quite this dramatic. The collar that I'm going for, I want it to look quite new, but with a little bit of age. I don't want it to be super rusty or super scratched, but I don't want it to be perfect either. So that's a bit more subtle now. So this is the second fill layer that I'm adding for specular roughness variation. So I've made this linear dodge so that it adds a bit of dirtiness on top, 
but doesn't replace what's already there. And so now I'm kind of looking for sort of smears, maybe fingerprints, wipes, that sort of thing. And Substance is really great for that. Its procedurals are absolutely amazing for, for grime and just general tiling. Now I've taken that down quite a bit so that it is really, really subtle. Just viewing the diffuse color. Around the eyes, it was looking a little bit harsh, so I'm just playing with the ambient occlusion side of that masking generator there. And just playing around with the default roughness, the base roughness, to see if that can give me any different results. Naming things, super important to make sure, especially if you get a lot of layers in your substance stack, just to make sure you know what is what. And you can also group things in folders. So I've put the two things that are specular roughness in the same folder so that I can turn everything on and off at once or easily find it. So now I've added another fill layer, this time for height information. So like I said, gold is mainly reflection and kind of the breakup of the surface so things like bump and spec roughness are really going to help sell it because if it was flat it's going to look really cg so i want a little bit of spec breakup and i also want a little bit of kind of undulation on the surface again i don't want this to look super used and worn so i just want a slight bit of wobble as if it has been handcrafted and maybe some scratches later on so i'm just playing with different procedurals seeing what gives me something nice i don't want it to look Odd or anything like that or like bumpy I just want it to look as if it's been maybe divoted a bit when it's been crafted or made so a lot of texturing and look dev is just thinking about the story of how something is actually created and trying to work out how to show that to make something look realistic and not CGI so that's quite a nice break up of the spec there I'm quite liking that one So I've noticed I've got a seam on the back here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change my mapping to triplanar instead of based on UVs. And that way the textures that Substance is using, because they're all tiling, then it won't make a difference if they go across my UV seams. So I'm just gonna go through and change all of the procedures that I'm using to triplanar. So what I'm doing now is I've just duplicated that base gold color and to add a slight bit of variation, I'm just gonna mask off these few pieces of additional detail. And I'm gonna apply a slightly different base material to them with a bit of change in roughness and a bit of change in diffuse color. So I get a little bit of variation. I don't want anything too major. Like here it looks like it's silver. I don't really want that. I just want it to look like maybe they were made at different times or out of different processes. So it's kind of changed their color or something like that, just so that there's a bit of material difference and it just adds a bit of visual interest really. So I use the polygon select there to apply that to the mask and you can now kind of see it's got a slightly warmer tone to it and I'm just messing around with colors to see what works and what doesn't. So now I'm just gonna try some of the materials that come with substance. I'm not really loving that dirtiness that I added myself. So I'm just trying the rust with a smart mask to see if that can help kind of give me a bit more definition in where the ambient occlusion is and where things are bunching up.
already I'm much preferring it because I forgot earlier to change the metallic value in the places that are a bit occluded, whereas this rust has got a predefined metallic of zero. So it's just breaking up that spec a bit because rust is an oxidization on the top of the metal, then it means that it has its metallic value would be zero instead of one, like the rest of the gold is. So that's just really helping break up the spec response in those areas and is giving me a lot more interest than I previously had. So yeah, now it's just a case of using the mask that comes with that rust to get something that isn't too obvious and is quite subtle. I'm not liking this tile texture where it just applies it to everywhere. I kind of want something more around, that makes sense around the edges that would be worn. So here I'm quite liking that. So now I'm just gonna try and add a little bit of diffuse variation by using just one of these procedurals with a really slight overlay just to add a bit of change to the color, nothing too major. Like I was saying earlier, I want it to be quite similar. I want it to all obviously look like gold, but nothing is perfectly one color. So I'm just trying to break up that CGI look a little bit, just playing with some procedurals to see what can give me something quite subtle and nice. So I'm just viewing the diffuse color there to see what it's actually doing rather than viewing the whole material at once. So now I'm thinking about scratches. I don't want anything too major, um, but I want maybe just some slight scratches all over. Um, I wear silver rings and those were great reference for this because um, precious metals like gold and silver are actually quite malleable. So over a lot of wear, then you will get small scratches in them. But if you were to look at it from far away, you wouldn't see it. But if you look close up, you'd see all these tiny like micro facets in it. So I just kind of want to replicate that to get a little bit of specular play when a light hits it. Obviously this is way too much at the moment, so it's just about playing with those sliders, getting something nice and subtle, and often just playing with opacities of different layers. So just looking at the smart mask, seeing something that I can use as a base. I never use any of Substance's presets straight out of the box, but they're always really great starting places. So I'm quite liking this. The only thing is, for some reason, the height map, the height value isn't working quite correct. You can see I'm getting a bit of a lip around the edge, whereas I want just the scratches to come in. I don't want this white added as well. And you can kind of see that almost bevel that it's adding. And so I'm just checking my height channel to see why that's happening. And I've realized that there was some transparency there. So I've just gone to my base layer and filled it with height information that it didn't have in the first place. And that seemed to have fixed it. So those scratches are pushing out, so I've just inverted that to push them in. Just viewing that mask. So I really want the scratches just around the edge. Setting a second set, a second layer of scratches that are gonna be slightly deeper around the edge where an object would get bashed and stuff like that. And then I'm just using another noise on top of that to help break that up further so there's not scratches on every single edge, just on some of them. So I'm having that bevel issue again with this height map. It's pushing out when I want it to actually just be pushing in. So I'm just using a levels and just remapping the height data down to 0.5 to fix that. But these scratches are looking quite good. I've got some big ones and then a few subtle ones kind of everywhere. And I'm quite liking that. 
and I've seen another seam, so I'm just making sure that everything's triplanar again. And now, for 50 minutes work, I think that's pretty good. And this is actually basically the textures that I use for the final thing. I did end up updating the model later on, just to add a bit more detail in there, just a few extra buttons and a chain from the front. The beauty of Substance is, because this is all procedural, I just had to import that new model, rebake the maps like AO, curvature and stuff like that, and it updated for me. So it was very little work. Even if the UVs were different and stuff like that, it wouldn't matter. So that's one of my favorite things about Substance is just how quick it is to update. So one thing I thought was missing is the face was lacking detail. I wasn't really getting the folds and stuff that I'd sculpted in ZBrush for the eyes and for the mouth. So I've just gone back into ZBrush, I'm sharpening things up. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna export this model as a high poly. And then when I bake this time inside a substance, I'm gonna use this as my high poly to make sure that it's taking all that information. And then these creases and stuff will be taken into my occlusion map, into my curvature map, into my normal map. And then substance will be able to use those to apply things like the rust and the scratches on so that I really do get that definition in there. So yeah, I'm just gonna export that as it is, highest subdivision. And then in substance, when I'm setting up my bake on this new geo, so now I've made sure that it's not using low poly as high poly anymore when I'm baking in substance. And as you can see, there's no real eyelids in this now. And then when it's baking through, it helps pick those up. So I've got that now in my baked data. So the materials and the things that I've created, especially the masks and stuff like that, can pick up these details that weren't there before. And that can just help inform my textures that Substance makes. So cool, yeah, like I said, this was about 50 minutes work that I've sped up into about 20 minutes video. And this is basically the final thing that I end up using. I think I cranked the contrast a little bit inside of Mari, but everything was pretty good. And when I got this into Arnold, it was basically plug and play. I didn't really have to do any color corrects or anything like that. So here's just the rendering inside of Substance. I think it's iRay, I'm not 100% sure on the name of it. And then here it's inside of Mari. So this is when I had imported all the maps and then I've just plugged it through a shader. So as you can see, it does look quite different. Like I said, it depends on your lighting and I could have set, changed the environment light in Mari and I did, and it would often give me different things. But then here's the final render, which I was actually super happy with. I was really, really happy with how this turned out. I think the gold looks really nice, the scratches especially. Um, yeah, I think it looks pretty good. So that's the first part of this video series that I'm creating. So we're gonna go through the whole process of me texturing, a little bit modeling, and look deving this cat. It's not gonna be a how-to step-by-step, it's gonna be just following along and me kind of commenting over what I did. So stay tuned to this YouTube channel, subscribe for the next parts. I don't know when the next one's gonna be out. Um, it takes a little bit to kind of get this all together, but I hope this was helpful. And if you do have any questions, please feel free to leave them below. If you've got any questions about how to use individual things in pieces of software, then I do have some other videos that are more kind of how-to-y. Um, but leave a comment of what you'd like to see and I will hopefully get around to things like that. But like I said, hopefully this has been of help. My name is Michael Wilde. This has been Texturing Inside a Substance and best of luck. Take it easy. Cheers.